Hello, I'm Eric Hunter, and this is Behind the Curtain. Here we showcase student productions, whether it be a short film for class, a personal project, or even a feature film. Today we'll be sitting down with Trishina Harris to discuss her short film, Crazy, that's crazy with a K, which tells the deviant story of two obsessive lovers who fail to communicate their feelings and end up paying for it. So let's take a look, and then afterwards, we'll sit down with director Trishina Harris. Key. And now we come to the thrilling final episode of our radio drama. Old Pete Belden, driver of the Jetley from Carson Burr. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.
Hey, honey. I didn't mean to hit you that hard. I just didn't want you to leave. Not just yet. Smile. Now would you look at that? Our first photo together. You're so special to me. You wanna know why? Because men are truly weak. They'll fuck anything that has a hole. They're just so insecure. But you're not like the average guy. You know? You're a little bit like me. Oh the popcorn's done. We're gonna we're gonna watch a movie. Hey, wake up. We're gonna watch a movie. Uh... Crazy. I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. Crazy for feeling so blue. I knew you'd love me as long. Welcome back. I'm here with Trishina Harris. Trishina, thanks so much for being Hi. on the show. Um, so yeah, let's talk about your movie. Um, I'm interested. Uh, where did the inspiration for, for Crazy come from? Uh, were, were, you, were you once stalked or <laughs> did it come from somewhere no. else? Okay. Oh my gosh, thank God, no. Um, so I did this like semester in LA program and we had this class where we basically had to make a short film. And you know, I was kind of like thinking through ideas and I was watching a horror movie at the time. And you know, it's like always the girls always being the victim. And I was like, what if I changed that around, you know, the little plot twist or whatever. And that's how I came up with Crazy. Um, actually with my roommate, she was like, oh, what if it was like with a K instead of like a C? And I was like, okay, I'll go with that. Okay. That sounds different, that, so. That's cool. That sounds like the exact conversation my parents had before they, they named me. They decided to, because oh. my name's Eric and they, they wanted to make their their blonde hair, blue eye baby more interesting, so they put a K on it. So that's cool that it just kind of came from a conversation with your roommate. Yeah. Um, was there any other deeper meaning for Crazy with a K? Um, no, honestly. Okay. Um, so you said you made this during your semester in LA, you, so you made this in LA. Yes. Um, did that make things more difficult, or did it make things, uh, did, did it give you more opportunities to find uh, uh, actors, uh, scouting locations, uh, how was that? Um, it was definitely a lot more difficult. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the things to film in LA is just super difficult, okay. especially since we had to get like film permits and we had to get like insurance and everything since you know it's not like at our, our, at our university in like in Indiana or whatever. Um, I had to go first actually, like we all had like different weeks where we had to like film so we won't like crash with each other and so everyone had like crew and stuff. But um, I had to go first, unfortunately. So um, I pretty much have full crew. Um, but to find actors, I couldn't really find actors that quickly. It's really hard to find actors, actually. Right. <laughs> so I just used one of my classmates um, as one of my actors. And mm -hmm. it worked out, yeah. I thought uh, your, the two actors you used, uh, it was um, Jonathan and what, what was the actress's name? Uh, Chardé. And Chardé. I thought. They had tremendous chemistry, even though they were never both conscious at the same time. But I think that you know, I think you chose very good actors for that, uh, for for your film Crazy, um, especially since you know the casting process was so limited. Uh, so, casting included, and just finding people to help you on this film, uh, and, and insurance and all that. What other challenges did you run into while while making this? Um, since it was like my first time like directing, I was like panicking the whole entire time like, oh, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do that? How am I gonna find like the supplies? How am I gonna like schedule everything and make sure everything turns out on time? So I think shooting took like two days. 
I think it was supposed to take one day, but we ended up filming for like two days and stuff like that. And yeah. Okay. So you say it was it was difficult to gather all these supplies and things like that. Uh, I know you had uh, you had very interesting props. You had cookies, and uh, <laughs> you also had uh, this shrine that was just built to to Jonathan's character that he found in the closet. Did did you did a lot of time go go into making that, or did you just have it lying around? It was so fun making yeah. this shrine. Yeah. So we actually had to take pictures of Jonathan in order to make the shrine, and Those I thought scary it was like, pictures. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was so fun. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually texted Jonathan. I was like, hey, do you have like a personal item that you can meet <laughs> on the shrine? So cryptic. And he was like, yeah. And then he sends a picture <laughs> of these like, uh, I think it was um, the Peanuts boxers. And it was like mm -hmm. Christmas edition. <laughs> and so he brought that in. I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. That's awesome. And um, I know on the day of when we were filming, he like, I wanted to, him for to cut a piece off his of his hair, mm -hmm. and I thought he was just gonna take like a little small little snippet of his hair. But dude said snip, and it was yeah. like an inch of hair on the. He's thing. got a lot of hair. He can afford it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. that's cool. That's uh, that's cool that you really got into making the stalker board for Jonathan. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Um, that's cool that he was so into it, and he was willing to give you a, a photo of him and his boxers and and, and things like that. <laughs> that's really cool. Um, so yeah, d uh, was. Watching this, it, it looked like uh, some of the things he was he was doing were maybe uh, improvised or uh, just off the top of his head, especially the part where he was just in the mirror, just like raging at himself. What, was any part of this improvised? Uh, did you just let them have free reign? And uh, yeah, some of it. Um, he he kind of improved it a little mm -hmm. bit, but with all of his actions and stuff with the mirror, like all improv mm -hmm. and it was like I tried so hard not to laugh I knew I shouldn't be laughing as like right. a director but it was just so funny to him just like improv and just like do his own thing mm -hmm. that was like great well that's cool I think uh, as a director that's like a really good thing you can do for your actors is just let them kind of run with it and run with their characters and I can tell you did that because I could see that both of them really sunk into that that state of mind, that crazy with a K state of mind. They were both so just deviant, weird characters, and I thought it was really cool uh, the way you captured that. Um, so being a first-time director, uh, what what takeaways uh, would you say that you got after completing this film that you, know, you can use mm. to, to help you? Uh, definitely, I gained a lot more confidence in mm -hmm. myself as a director and writer. At first, I was like just overthinking everything and just like, overanalyzing it and like towards the end I was like you know what okay this wasn't too bad as I thought um, I I'm probably a lot more organized yeah. <laughs> than I was before um, yeah just confidence and organization okay cool that helped a lot and communication too as well right it's like making sure I communicate with everyone mm -hmm. the crew and the actors so did you act as your own cinematographer or did you have a, a cinematographer on set I did uh, Brody was my DP. oh okay We've yeah, had Brody was, on the show. He was before. great. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I could tell that you you were very effective in communicating your vision to everybody on the crew because everything seemed very uh, cohesive. Uh, I really liked uh, the the canted angle of him whenever he whenever he peeks in the door, uh, Jonathan Jonathan's character, uh, and he sees the the weird shrine that was made to him. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was a very enjoyable film for me. Uh, Crazy with a K. Mm -hmm. um, so, was Jonathan, was he method acting at all? You said he, he, he cut off snippets of his hair. Was he in character whenever you weren't on set or anything like that? I feel like he was. Yeah. Like, every time when uh, we were, like, filming other scenes, we would always, he would, like, sit in a corner mm -hmm. with his headphones just, like, <laughs> rocking right. himself. And, like, sometimes he just, like, fell asleep on set, too, which I thought that was really funny. I could, I could tell that he was really into it by the point in the film where he was huffing underwear and uh, the killer by Talking Heads was playing in the background. That was, that evoked a, a visceral response for me, I think. <laughs> it, was, it was very interesting to see Jonathan do that sort of thing on camera. <laughs> yeah, um, it, was, it was funny. Yeah. Um, so, uh, this was your first project as a director. Uh, any projects in the works? Uh, any up and coming films that uh, you want to promote? Yeah, actually, um, I'm actually going to film a short film later in March called Dear Serenity. It's a coming-of-age comedy. Okay. Just like a definitely switch from <laughs> Thriller to coming-of-age comedy. 
Um, I could say it gives off like a Ferris Bueller kind of day vibes because okay. that's like one of my favorite movies ever. So I kind of wanted to kind of like something make something inspired by that movie. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, uh, it's been great talking to you about Crazy with a K. Do you have a working title for that movie uh, that, that you'd like to that you'd like to tease? Um, I don't want to put you on the spot if you ooh. don't. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you do make it and uh, you you want to promote it uh, and uh, submit it, then we'll have you on again. I think it'd be really cool to to see your take on a Ferris Bueller esque uh, sort of comedy. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being on the show, Trishina. It's been good talking to you. And uh, thank you for watching. Um, as always, if you, a friend, or uh, any anyone you know have uh, your own capital K crazy student production and uh, you're interested in being featured here on our show, uh, you can refer to the link on the screen now or uh, you can find that same link down in the description below. Uh, until next time, I'm Eric Hunter and this has been Behind the Curtain. Mm -hmm.